is up, team? Welcome back to the Red Storm Rapid Reaction Podcast. I just woke up. I got to make sure that I'm not dreaming. I didn't make up that St. John's just beat Butler by 34 points yesterday. That St. John's won a conference game by 34 points yesterday. St. John's wins two in a row, suddenly controls their fate to get to the fifth seed in the Big East. Man, how quickly seasons can change. You know, and we have a long way to go before we can say this season has changed into a success. But we do know that we control our own fate each game out now. You win out in the regular season in four winnable games. You win the first game in the Big East tournament. You have done yourself a huge opportunity, gave yourself a huge opportunity and made huge progress passing the teams right in front of you on the bubble line. The Creightons, the Xaviers, the Marquettes, the Seton Halls of the Big East, they're all catchable right now. All right, we control our fate. Excuse me. We control our fate against um, Xavier. We could sweep them, play them at home. We only have that one game against Marquette because, of, you know, we, we lost the home game. But if we go to Marquette and beat them at their place in the one time we play while getting this, you know, these five, four or five wins on the, on the schedule left, we'd be at 20 wins and be comparable to all those teams and have an advantage uh, head-to-head versus Xavier, versus Marquette. This is assuming we beat Crane at home. We'd split with them, split with Seton Hall. So they would have no advantage over us. We'd have the obvious advantage over uh, Xavier and Marquette in terms of head-to-head, split with the other two, and we'd have a comparable resume. So we're giving ourselves a chance to really be in the conversation, but you can only control what you can control. All right, so that starts with a big opportunity next Wednesday against Creighton, a team that beat us by 20 plus points at their place early in the season it was kind of a low watermark for our, uh, in terms of us in Big East play. And um, we'll, we'll see really how far we've come. If we can focus and take this same defensive intensity we've seen against Butler and Xavier, even against UConn and Villanova and put it towards a Creighton team who offensively does a lot of things to make you uncomfortable. All right. Constant movement, usually four, sometimes five shooters on the court, a big guy in the middle who can really uh, draw attention and, and stretch you out. Um, and so we, we know firsthand how, how dangerous they can be when they're on. And generally speaking, they seem to be on more often than not when they're playing us. Uh, Mike Anderson has had some success against them so far in his two years here. Plus, we almost had them in the uh, Big East Tournament year one when they were the one seed. So um, we'll see if he can duplicate that success, not what we saw earlier in the Big East year this season, but in, in past seasons, and um, take care of them at Carnesec Arena, where we have been quite good this year. It seemed like a good crowd yesterday against Butler. Helped us uh, helped us a lot, it seems. Uh, once it was 20-20, to 20, game was going back and forth for the first 12 minutes of the game. Aaron Wheeler hit his first three of the game, and from then the team just kind of took off, all right? And he was hot throughout the game. Julian Champagny had 30-plus points. Let's look at the box score quick. Um, yeah, Julian Champagny had 31 points. He had 32 for a second, but they reviewed a three-point shot, took one away. So 31 points on um, 11 for 22 shooting, 50% from the field, 4 for 9 from 3. Seven rebounds, three assists, seven steals, no turnovers. All right, the first player in bas- college basketball to do that in 10 years, I saw on Twitter. It's the, it's the seven steals and the no turnovers that really, you know, <clears throat> make it a particularly impressive game, or a unique game, I should say. 31 points is always impressive, but you don't see seven steals, zero turnovers to go along with it very often, obviously. Posh Alexander uh, really was the star in the first half. 13 points, 10 assists, 3 rebounds, 2 steals, 2 blocks, uh, 2 turnovers. He hit that 3 at the end of the buzzer in the first half, carried the momentum into the halftime locker room, really kind of, you know, stamped a already impressive first half and and made it seem like we were going to cruise to a win. But that's, you know, quite often not the case. Teams usually make a run at some point and, and make it a game. Fortunately for us yesterday, and unfortunately for Butler, we uh, kept our foot on the gas, we hit shots, and we just extended it, extended it, extended it. We saw contributions from a bunch of guys. Those three guys in particular, Champagny, uh, Posh, and Wheeler, really led the charge, but other guys stepped up. Soriano played a good game, had some nice big baskets, easy baskets, was a force on the inside, had two more blocks, um, six rebounds. Mathis, six points. Four rebounds, two assists, two steals. He was three for three from the field. He's being much more selective since that one for 14 night. 
All right, so he took that message well, and he, he provides a lot defensively. And when he's cutting to the basket and he's out in transition and he's being a threat, not just post up in the corner, but, you know, making dives to the elbow or, or screening for others, then he can be a, a real big asset to the team. Um, the bench played a big role. Uh, this is the second game in a row where we went 10 deep within the first 10 minutes, and then our guys were much fresher in the second half, extending leads late into the game. So it might seem confusing when we see, you know, four subs with a starter eight minutes into the game, but you got to take into account what it's going to mean later in the game. All right. We might not win that three minute stretch where we have that five guys out there, but we might be in a 10 minute stretch later in the game because we got fresher guys. All right. So it's not always what's right in front of you. It's, you know, what might it lead to later in the game, but the bench overall, everyone seemed to have some contributions. Uh, we'll soon lead the bench with six points. He had three rebounds, three assists in 16 minutes or 17 minutes. A uh, good overall stat line from him. Um, I thought Stanley played well in the second half. Obviously, it's garbage time at that point, but he was active, getting rebounds, had that nice dunk off a of pick and roll. NY did some nice things. Um, Coburn did get that flagrant too. Um, you know, I thought I wasn't surprised by the call. I don't think it was. I don't think he was trying to hurt anybody, but it did look like he didn't go out of his way. He certainly didn't go out of his way not to trip him. He kind of followed through on it. Um, it was the trip that got him ejected. Um, you know, I don't think it was malicious. I don't think he's a bad guy. I would have expected a guy on either team to get ejected for that, though. There's just the way that things are called nowadays. Um, he hit two points, came back down to earth a little bit, but <clears throat> it wasn't like he was out there hurting us. He just didn't get many open looks. Um, he didn't force it either, so that's good. Smith had 17 minutes. He's been uh, better, you know, uh, I think attacking and looking to create for others, not just settling for his own shot. He had three assists in 17 minutes, three points. Um, two rebounds. I think he's been playing tougher lately. He's really, really locked in, trying his best on the defensive end. He's limited athletically and size-wise compared to so many other guys we have on the team. But um, I think as the season's progressed, he's gotten better, and he's a, a nice piece to have on the bench. You know, um, when we're losing games earlier in the year, people want to point to, like, we don't have much depth, all right? We're not as deep as people want to say. And, you know, depth is all about comparative to others, all right? Um, we go deeper than most teams, doesn't mean that um, w saying we have better depth and talent than other teams doesn't mean that we have better top end talent always, right? Like right now, our eighth, ninth, tenth guys would probably be Smith, Coburn, and NY or Stanley, however you cut it. And those guys aren't great players, but as an eighth, ninth, tenth guy, comparatively to the other guys in the league, comparatively to those uh, guys who are g getting minutes for other teams, they are good players. They are definitely above average, and our depth, just like it was last year, is making serious uh, headway as the season progresses. All right, we're able to go deep into our bench and create runs with guys who aren't starters to offset guys who aren't having good games. Um, tonight, against Xavier, um, you saw it against Nova in that comeback late, um, and and there's plenty of other examples to say the contrary. We haven't been great in close games, so you could say, well, why aren't our guys fresh at the end of close games? I think that's more to do with the construction of our roster. Um, point to me for making excuses, that's fine. But I think that the added depth is really an advantage. We saw it last year, we're seeing it again this year, and I hope to con hopefully these guys just continue to get better. You know, the NYs, the Stanleys, Usu coming off the bench fills a lot of gaps. He can impact the game in so many ways. Um, Smith could be an offensive threat. Um, Coburn, an offensive threat, and they could really, really – supplement you know what our starting five does best and that group of five has really made progress these last two games posh mathis champagne wheeler and soriano getting a lot of um, time on the court playing well um even late into that game we were up 25 we had that that team in there i think it's just you know coach anderson realizes that's his five-man group to start going forward um and he wants to give them ample ample opportunity ample opportunities to play together um I, no, another thing I noticed, you know, just thinking of how we were playing well last year, we had so many easy dunks from Moore, right? And um, they weren't always easy to see where they came from. A lot of them were off drives. A lot of them were on dub pops. Some of them were off of offensive rebounds. Very few of them were just him posting up. This, this last stretch of games, these last, you know, five, six, seven Big East games, we've seen more and more easy baskets from our guys. Soriano getting dunks. Wheeler didn't get any uh, inside baskets yesterday, but he's got a, a handful of dunks and putbacks and attacking the basket. NY's had a few putbacks. Stanley's had a few baskets around the, the rim. 
Champ has been around the basket. Math is getting Math is getting easy bus, buckets and transition, um, some dunks as well, and it's those easy baskets that can offset a cold shooting perimeter night. Um, we're not always going to be this hot from three. Champ isn't always going to go four for nine. Wheeler's certainly not going to always go four for five. All right, Usu's not going to always go two for four. So as a team, when you go eleven for twenty-two from three, you don't rely on those easy baskets. But if we were to go five for twenty or six for 24 from three, those easy baskets really help you in those in those lulls to stay in games and to push leads out further. So that's something that's really changed, I think, in the second half of the season. While we've been playing better in the Big East play, we've been getting some easy baskets, Soriano, Wheeler especially. Um, 10 for 11 from the free throw line, another huge step forward, okay? We, I'm not going to say they lost us games, but when you're losing games by, you know, less than five and you're getting outscored to the free throw line, whether because you're, you know, fouling, that's on you. But if you're just missing free throws, all right, you're just missing free throws, you're not giving yourself a chance. We were outscored at the free throw line by 10, 15, sometimes even 20 points in games decided by less than five points. All right, that's just something that is in your own control for the most part. And if you're not taking advantage, you're just doing yourself a disjustice. Disjustice? Um, disservice. Um... 35 57 from the field so we shot 61 percent from the field again wish you could bottle that up but you really can't count on that for many games the ball the ball pa or the ball movement the passing uh finding of the open man the unselfishness there's one play in the first half when champ had a pretty good look from three but instead he passed it off at the last second to wheeler who had a great look from three that kind of epitomized you know the change we've seen of our team giving up a good look to get a great shot or you know, our best player being unselfish in a spot where we easily could have put one up. He wasn't like he was cold by any sense. Uh, he easily could have put that up. And there's some guys who are probably saying we want Champ shooting that shot. But he realized the opportunity to give Wheeler, a guy who's been money on open threes, a perfectly good set his feet shot. He had just made one, two possessions before. And, and that was the beginning of us really opening up that game. And it started with Posh. I mean, being so unselfish in the first half, I think he had nine assists in the first half, close to it. He finished with 10. Um, but he was really unselfish, getting guys involved, making plays for others, and it just kind of um, snowballed to the rest of the team. We had, again, on 35 made baskets, we had 21, 23 assists. So an, a, a great ratio there, just like we had against Xavier. And for the most part of the season, we've been really high in terms of NCAA rankings when it comes to assists to made basket ratio. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I know I know we, we do fare very well there. Uh, the minute distribution... Wheeler played 29, Champ 34, Posh 28, Mathis 22, and Soriano 23. So all five of the starters played 22 plus minutes and a 34 point blowout. No one on the bench played more than 17. Wusu played 17, Smith played 17, NY played 11, Stanley played 9. Uh, Coburn played 8, obviously his night got cut short from the ejection, but 10 or so. So uh, pretty good minute distribution. I think you ride that, I think you, you know your three Guys right now are Wheeler, Champ, and, and uh, Posh. And um, Soriano, if he's playing well and he's not in foul trouble and they're not, you know, put, uh, if they're not figuring a way to exploit him defensively, then he's a guy you want out there for the, as many minutes as he can play. And then Mathis, if he's not hurting you offensively, he's doing good things defensively and making good decisions on offense. Another guy you want to play as much as possible. And I think it's those three main guys and those other two roles can switch as the game and how people are playing uh, go. Wusu could easily slide in for Mathis. Um, if, if Soriano's getting beat defensively, you have NY and Stanley as defensive options. Both of those guys have been capable, um, you know, spotting minutes and providing some positive impact as well. I love Stanley going forward. I think he's got a, a lot of potential. Um, said that over and over again. But um, we have done a great job these last two games taking care of business. Now it's time with the expectations slowly rising back in, okay, to continue to do that to beat Creighton on Wednesday take that momentum win the next three from there and see what happens all right but we have a chance each and every game going forward and I know fans are going to be all of a sudden super confident again saying that uh, we should win this game we should beat these guys and then anything to the contrary of that means a huge huge letdown a huge uh, disappointment and um, it's it's Easier said than done. I'll just say that. So I say we enjoy the ride. We root for them each and every step along the way, and we see what happens at the end of the season. Um, but until then, guys, I hope you keep tuning in. Uh, thank you guys for, for listening, for following, for uh, checking in and, and adding some comments here and there. I appreciate that. This has been the Red Storm Rapid Reaction Podcast. 
for Boo Harvey. This has been Pat Kane. Peace.